Today.com, the leading digital TV station out of Washington, D.C. I am your host, Busi Matsiko Annan, live from our studio in New York City. And I'm hosting the African Diaspora Grassroots Voting. I can't wait for what this voting season has in store. We're going to have amazing guests on our show, and you can watch us live on four platforms that is twitter facebook instagram africtoday.com well today we're going to have an amazing guest stay tuned welcome back everyone I am so happy to have you. Today we are going to have the amazing leading grassroots mobilizer extraordinaire who is known as a fixture in everything diaspora in New York City. Hadja Ramatsu Ahmed, who is the executive director and founder of the African Life Center, which is a New York City based organization which helps Africans in the United States access essential services such as housing and health care. Welcome, Hadja Ramatsu. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, Busey, for this wonderful introduction. I really you appreciate look it. Thank you. And you too. You look very beautiful. Thank you. And Thank I you. I can't I'm wait for this. Definitely. <laughs> I'm really that you have invited me to join this uh, very important conversation on voting for our um, community. Yes, you guys. I am so happy to have Hadja Ramatsu. She's very insightful. And I can't wait for what she's going to talk about your, your civic duty during this 2020 elections, which is a critical election year, especially during this COVID-19 time. And at a time when America and the world is experiencing a lot. Stay tuned for what's next. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome, Hadja Ramatsu. Welcome back. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so Hadja Ramatsu, just tell us a little, about, a little bit about yourself. When did you decide you were going to become an activist, I mean, an advocate? You're so passionate. I find very few people who are as passionate as you are. I really, truly believe it's a vocation in your part, on your part. Yeah, um, you know, I started um, my community work not here in America. I started at an early age in Africa. And that's how I found myself in America. Um, my good work uh, talks for itself. I'm very, um, very, really grassroots oriented. And I'm very passionate about people, about women, children, and the humanity in general of how we can surpass um, sufferings and become very productive for ourselves and for the community. So I started in Africa and that's how I came to America. The first time I participated in the International Visitors Program to understudy mm -hmm. American women in politics. 
I came here. We went to about eight days, and it was an really? eye opener. Yeah. So um, I learned a lot. Then I went back to Africa. I, you know, what I learned here, I applied some of them in Africa before I came okay. the second time, and I lived and uh, I've been here since. Oh my goodness, because Haji Ramatu, I mean, it's a, uh, when I, I first met you around 2008 on Africa Heritage Day, no, 2006 or 2007, Africa Heritage Day at a Gracie Mansion with Mayor Bloomberg. And so seeing you continue mobilizing uh, the African diasporas for me is such a remarkable feat and um, really, truly inspiring. So Haji Ramatu, I would love you to tell us about what grassroots voting is, as well as a little bit more about the Africa Life Center. Yeah, the Africa Life Center, um, I don't have a, a space. And my understanding of helping people is you don't have to be rich or own a mansion before you give your service to the people. So I operate from everywhere. I can operate in the bus, in the train, at home to serve my people. So that's how I do it. And I've been doing this, helping, organizing our people, um, advocating on their behalf, developing programs and inviting Africans and non-Africans to participate. So a whole lot of things that I do, and I still continue to do it. Uh, the best thing is you, you, nothing should stop somebody from achieving a goal. It might be Absolutely. difficult. Yeah, it might be difficult. But just take it step by step and try to do it, you know, inch by inch. And eventually everything will be accomplished. And that is what has been, uh, has kept me on helping the community up to today. Mm -hmm. mm. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Yeah, uh, you, what did you say? Some of the advocacy that we have done is comprehensive immigration reform. I was, yeah. you know, I participated in the advocacy uh, for the census money from the, uh, uh, the assembly in Albany. I have advo mm -hmm. advocated at the city council to have um, uh, uh, in interpretation for parents at schools. And I, I, I was there on behalf of the African community. So there are a whole lot of things that we have done. And I have partnered with other organizations also as an individual. Uh, and yes. also as an organization to support the African community. And I still do it. And even sometimes it's go be, it goes beyond just helping your community, but helping the humanity, just going on to help humanity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. I mean, this is what people need to hear because you have been a voice in the African community. But I think People need to hear you out individually. You need to be seen talking about uh, all these the amazing accomplishments you have done to support the African diaspora, because I believe that will help facilitate and help more people get access to these services and know that, um, that they are not alone, especially when you talk about services such as inter interpretation. I believe that's a big language barrier is a big challenge facing a lot of um, diaspora sometimes. And um, when you're when they have bridges such as yourself on organizations such as yourself, that is fantastic. Um, one second. Yes. Yeah, so um, I would love to uh, know. So what are the preparations you're doing? In, uh, in the African community as you prepare, as we get towards the 2020 U.S. elections? Yeah, um, the preparation is, you know, everybody's talking about it. The African community is aware. And I, as of now, I can tell you that I'm part of a structure called the African Diaspora for Good Governance. It's an organization that is looking into the development of Africans. But we have the African um, Diaspora for Good Governance PAC. And the PAC simply means Political Action Committee. So it is said, it is said that only this PAC can really participate in political activities. So any organization that wants to participate in any political activity in America, you have to register it as a PAC. And that's what 
the ADGG, the African Diaspora for Good Governance, has done with the PAC to promote and educate our people about um, the uh, election and how we can really get ourselves involved uh, in the in the in the political process, fundraising and voting and uh, campaigning. We are using the PAC to achieve all these goals. Oh, wonderful. So is this PAC uh, non-partisan or it is uh, partisan or? Well, I would say it is, um, it is, uh, it is party because it is, it is political. So it is okay. uh, partisan. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. but the ADGG is non-partisan. Mm. The ADGG is an umbrella organization. The African Diaspora for Good Governance is an umbrella organization and the subsidiary is the, the PAC. So it is the African Diaspora for Good Governance Political Action Committee. And this subsidiary solely promotes politics in the in the African community. Wonderful, to, wonderful. Okay. I beg your pardon, what did you I just I missed the last part of what you said? I'm saying that I'll talk more about it as we go along and I'll give people contacts where they could call to be part of this because the political process is such that you don't talk about yourself self, but we have to do it collectively as a group. So when Africans okay. are participating in the political process, we yeah. have to contribute or campaign as a group, but not as an individual. When we come together as a group and we contribute towards the fundraiser, we participate in the process, then we are yeah. well positioned and we are, our voices will be heard. But when you go solo by yourself, nobody will mm -hmm. hear about you. And we don't have that money to really go solo. And the best thing is Africans in America coming together with one voice and participate in this political process. Wonderful. I mean, since you have talked about that, that brings an important uh, topic that I, uh, not topic, um, point that I really believe in much as we are pushing for people to vote. How, what about the issue of getting people elected to office? How are you facilitating that and what can we do to help support that? You know, again, we need to have a structure. There should be an umbrella structure to help us. Everybody is doing everything individually and yes. you know, we are getting there because um, I can talk about Charles Fowle, he is the assemblyman for Staten Island, very young, dynamic, and he, um, he lives in Staten Island. He did it. This, there was no organization that came behind him, but individual Africans, you could feel the, the, the power of individuals going to help in the campaign and the rest. And he's now in office. So, but if we have an, uh, an, an organization that will look into people even groom our youth who are who have interest in politics who will groom them so that they they can be positioned for professionally to take some political uh, seats in the in, in america we need to do that it's about time for us to come together as one uh, group uh, and you know participate and do things just like other groups are doing uh, to be to to get a position in the political process in America. Yes, to so get your vote. Uh, together you stand, united you stand, divided you fall kind of situation. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, it's also because when we are coming to support you, we support you for, it is like win-win situation, you know, so yeah. we come and support you, we'll tell you what our difficulties are or what our platform, what our, what we are asking for and you will tell us what you want, then we'll all, you know, you will all enjoy. But um, I know the African community, we are very young in this and we are very yeah, enthusiastic. Yeah. We give things out. That's I what believe happens. there's a great future yeah, ahead. Yeah. There's a great future and lots of opportunities. Yeah. We just yeah. uh, come together. I mean, I believe that's why this um, African diaspora uh, that's why this African diaspora grassroots organization, I mean, uh, show has been uh, placed. 
uh, it's to encourage this whole mobilization, uh, teaching people, uh, enlightening people, as well as coming together, uniting as we prepare for the 2020 elections. I can't wait for what you have to say in the next half of this show. Uh, we'll be back after the break. Thank you everyone for staying tuned. We'll be back and we'll hear from the amazing Gramatsu uh, on the next, what she called, what action, call for action she has and all that stuff, Go good stuff. Stay tuned guys. YDA return to play summer clinics. Recreation, Tuesday and Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. Travel team, EDP, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Free mask and water bottle. Register today at esyda.org. Email info at esyda. Phone 248-765-9369. Office 301-800-7848, toll free 800-995-5532, free registration for all summer clinics. All new players need buy uniforms. We're following COVID-19 soccer guidelines, small group practice with nine players and one coach. For more information, go to esyda.org. back to the African Diaspora and Grassroots Voting on Afrik today. I am your host, Busi Matsiko Anden, with the amazing Hajar Ramatsu Ahmed, the Executive Director and Founder of the Africa Life Center, based out of New York. Hajar Ramatsu, welcome back, and thank you for your insight on the 2020 U.S. elections. Thank you. Yes. Had your Ramatu before the break, we were sorry. Had your Ramatu before the break, we were talking about um, the voting blocks and that uh, leading to the elections, which is unique from the previous election. And how is that going at the moment? Well, it is going on well. Um, I believe um, everybody should tune towards the election. Um, you know and. The challenges are many. You know, the youth, our youth, it will surprise you that some of our youth don't even vote. I have encountered something, uh, one of our African youth, and he was born here, and he told me that, I mean, it's a waste of time to vote. So, you know, it is very challenging when people that you expect them to know better, and they use those time expressions like waste of time to vote they discourage you because i am a first generation so if our children are telling us or they are not really paying attention to voting then what is the sense because they are born here they are citizens you know we came we we came here and we gave birth to them but so we have to encourage our youth to really go out there register and vote and participate they should volunteer their time 
in their voting process. They sh we don't care which party you belong to. The best thing is yes, you absolutely. have to exercise your civic responsibility. Mm -hmm. It yes, is your right I agree with you. to participate in that. So volunteer, our forefathers, those who built America, they did not get it very easy. And particularly minorities and blacks in, in general. The African-American brothers and sisters who are here, they fought uh, for us. And that is why some of us who came from Africa and elsewhere, especially the black community, we are here in America. If not for them, life might be very difficult for us here. And we are seeing it even with them. Life is still difficult for them and for ourselves. So we need to appreciate what our forefathers in America have done for us and you know, continue the fight and be part of the process. We shouldn't be comfortable where we are because everything is going on well. Being complacent. You, you have education, you have a good job. No, you know, every human being has a responsibility. Whether you have yeah. it, you have money or not, whether you have some education or not, whether you have some resources or not, it is a godly responsibility for you to give mm -hmm, back mm -hmm, to your community. Absolutely. Even if very small. And I urge the youth to participate in the forthcoming election. Get yourself involved, volunteer, and talk to yourselves. Organize programs among yourselves. You know, I believe in not waiting for somebody to do things for us because we don't have a lot of structures in place for the African community. Mm -hmm. So we should learn to take initiatives good initiatives that will benefit us and benefit our children in the future. And I think uh, some of us are, are in a, on the right path trying to do that. Are there any organizations that uh, um, are mobilizing the youth in the African diaspora to vote or not, uh, not, um, not formal structures exist or no formal structures exist? The structure that I'm talking about is the, the African Diaspora for Good Governance Park. Uh, mm -hmm. It is yeah. new, but they are very dynamic and I'm part of it. Very dynamic. We also, okay, wonderful. Uh, we want to get the youth to participate. Then, there are other organizations. I don't know their names, but the one that I am involved in is the African Diaspora for Good Governance. So, mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, oh, I'm, pa I'm really heading the New York State. So. I really, um, uh, I put my emphasis on the youth. I always want the youth to be part of something. And you know, in our uh, back home, um, every older generation wants to hand over to the younger ones. Every parent wants their children to be better than, than themselves. So I use that model here. Whatever I am doing, I would like to see the youth to, to be, I mean, higher than myself, to get up there than myself, but I can be a shoulder for them to lean on, you know, to get to where they want to be or where I think that it is a, it will be a good place for them to be in the future. So, but there are other structures, there are other organizations, there might be other individuals who are also doing their own way to promote. Mm -hmm. And I know there are other youth organizations who are also doing their, their best, but you know, we have challenges. We don't have the resources. We don't have an office. I was just and about to ask you, what are the, some of the challenges you are facing with regard to this outreach and mobilization of uh, the African diaspora to vote during these elections or historically? And uh, what are you doing to mitigate and as well as what can uh, we do as a group to mitigate this? Yeah, you know, grassroots mobilization of voting is uh, it's a very wide spectrum. You're talking yeah. about getting people at the grassroots, people, and they are the majority. Let's cite an example of the Bronx. You want Africans okay. in the Bronx to participate in the in election. Majority of them are at the grassroots. They are at the bottom in, in the Bronx. So how do you get them? And they have the vote too. Not, probably not all of them are citizens, but majority yeah. of them can vote. So how do you get them? you need to have resources to get them first of all we don't have a location we don't have a location where we can a central it location a central location do you mean location because when you are mobilizing people uh, to vote at the grassroots it involves training it involves um, workshops it involves fundraising a lot of things you know it's very it uh, logistically consuming 
Yeah. So you need to educate people to go and vote. How do you educate them? You know, we want our people to vote. Probably some of them have to understand, especially those who have not voted for the first time in America or they are voting the first time in America. They need to know how they, what they will see when they get there. But you need to get them in a place where you can train them or give them a kind of a workshop. We don't have those locations, you know. So, and that is what my organization has faced. I realized that from the onset that if you want to get all logistics available before you continue working for the community, then you will not do anything. You will not go far. So what do I do? I still have to do something. That And the reason I told you from the beginning that I work in the bus, I work in the train, and I also work at home. You know, you have yeah. to do your own strategy of doing the work. Either you are typing or calling somebody or trying to refer somebody for services. You don't have to wait until you get an office. You have to do it. If somebody calls me and I'm in the train, I have to respond to that person when I'm in the train because I don't have a central location. When somebody calls me and tells me, okay, how can he or she access the... Uh, I'm so sorry. I had a, I have a toddler who just walked in and she's been taken away. So, you know, it's one of those situations of homeschooling, uh, the co you know what? The mom work life balance as mom. So you've got to excuse me for that. I apologize. Yeah. So 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 um, when somebody comes to you and the person is in dire need for housing, she needs a shelter. You don't have an office, you can still work, you can make a reference, you can tell the person where to go. Somebody calls and asks you about COVID, the person is having symptoms. You have to tell the person where to, where he or she will go, you know, immediately where she she must go, for for um to get um uh, taken care of. So I operate everywhere, and I believe some people do the same as I do, and um, you know it, there are challenges in for most organizations and the African community. Uh, resources is very logistic, financial, everything is very difficult, but we are still doing the job, and one day we'll get there absolutely i mean amazing steps and uh i really must commend you and i'm glad we are having these conversations these conversations have to take place and um i'm so glad the african community is getting a feel of our african diaspora grassroots voting where we'll be dealing with these types of issues and highlighting them and showing coming up with solutions because um folks such, such as yourself are bringing awareness to them and uh you'll likely inspire others and they will know how to um support you based on what you're sharing you know i believe it's very important because these are this is a very important election year and it's important that our voices are heard you know we can't just be casual about voting Voting is a civic duty that you all must exercise as long as you are an American citizen. Even though you are an African diaspora, but the moment you're an American citizen, you must exercise your votes. You know, that's my recommendation. And I believe you cannot, we can only complain about systems when you don't do anything about it. But you, you shouldn't even complain about it if you don't do anything about it. But if you vote, and I, I'm apparently, uh, Haji Ramatu, people are not even filling out census forms. Tell us about, tell us about that. Yeah, that is again, and and the and importance you about know, it. These two things go together, the census and the voting, you know, political, pro they, are all, they all go together. You know, we have to participate in the census because the money that the government distributes to all the communities in America, if we don't participate in the census, we'll be left out. We'll not be, we'll not get our share. And it can also affect other communities. So, and then we are also under, under we are really disadvantaged, you know, so we need to participate in this census. It's very, it's very challenging, I believe, because of the COVID and there's a lot of things that are being done remotely to get people to, to, to register. And 
some of our African. I hear the deadline. I, I mean, I filled out my census form, but I'm. I. It has been brought to my attention that the census has actually been. Ex the deadline was extended. Yeah, that, it was extended. Yeah. But when they extend it and people are not registering, I mean, it. It doesn't make sense then, you know. So we need to get people. We need to all of us. This is a campaign for everybody. All it's of a us. community, yeah, it's, an, it's, a, it's a collective effort, absolutely. Effort. Let's encourage our yeah. people to participate mm -hmm. in the... Have session. you heard? Encourage your relatives, encourage your friends, encourage everybody. everybody you know to fill out their census forms, to participate. Also, I believe the issue of how to get to the polling station. People should uh, have uh, polling buddies. They should go collect other people to take them to the polling stations i believe that can also help the issue of people not going to vote yeah and the thing is you know we're talking about organizations the fact that our african community we are now in the process to get really very involved with the park having an um, an umbrella organizations we can still utilize established organizations here Mm -hmm. You know, I do, I I do some things with the women women's uh, uh, league vote. You know, it's a it's a, a not for profit organization okay. by women, and it is over yeah. hundred years old. And what they mm -hmm. are doing is to get uh, they talk about the voting and I mean everything that concerns voting. They are very passionate and they are involved in it. They are also involved sometimes, in sometimes it's not necessary to reinvent the wheel. You can just uh, participate in uh, what's existing and then you just uh, supplement what you have and that kind of thing. I totally agree with you, Adya We should look for them. Our people, yes. I'm, I'm just urging you, look for organizations. There are African-American organizations that are in the political process. We have other... Uh, other organizations that are in the political process. You can call your elected officials and ask them questions. They will direct you to the right source where you will know what to do and participate in the political process. Everybody has a responsibility to I do agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah, so yes. let's look for organizations like League of Women Votes. You know, they are doing a lot. And also we have the the ADGG, the African Diaspora for Good Governance Pack, is yeah, a new organization. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to provide names for people who would like to join or would like to know absolutely. more about it. The president is called Honorable Uguchuku uh, okay. Uwakuru. He is the former okay. uh, deputy mayor of Newark. And he is mm -hmm. now the president of this organization. Very dynamic okay. man. And I am working, you know, I mean, relentlessly closely so with him, support him. Yeah. Okay. And we have Chijiki Indukwao. He is the vice president of ADGG, the African Diaspora. It's the same Program. organization. Okay. But the pack is led by the executive director, and he is called Chuks Eleanor. Um, he is the the executive director of the pack. But these are two different entities. So he is in charge of the political process of the ADGG. Mm -hmm. And if I can give you the telephone numbers to call so that you can talk to them and get more insight about what they are doing to get the Africans participate. But remember, we also have Africans who are preparing themselves to run for office. And yeah. they have all the information you will need to know our Africans. Oh, that, that organization has uh, information on the process of yeah. what you can do yeah. if you want to run for office. Have you yeah. heard if you want to run for office, there are some organizations such as the AGG. Is it AGG? ADGG. ADGG. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Where so you can uh, possibly yeah. learn about how you can run for office. Yeah, we have, we have people who are running for office in different states right now. They are preparing mm -hmm. themselves for different political seats. So we are also compiling names of people who have or who are in the process of running so that we'll also have a data of Africans participating. In the Bronx uh, for District 12, uh, I know of a young guy again from um, Guinea, Abdurrahman Jallo, mm -hmm. he's preparing himself to run. 
we might get okay. more people coming out but for now he's yes. the one that yes. i know uh, who so, is it's, it's, so it's very promising that uh, people are begin uh, that people are beginning to come out and run for office. Yes. So okay. and I also want to encourage the women. I want the to ask you something. Women. Yeah, the young the, women. Okay. No, the, finish your trend of thought. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the young women prepare yourselves and you know go in for a uh, run for office. I know some young women. I've spoken to some young women and they frown against that. They are like, it's too much pressure. They cannot stand people talking good and bad about them. But hey, in this world, if the if people don't talk about bad about you, you have to question yourself. Something is wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> if people don't talk bad about you, you have to question yourself. Why people don't talk bad about you? Something is wrong somewhere. So okay. it's good for people to talk about you. But when they talk bad about you, what do you do? You put yourself in the gear double yourself and press it very well so that the the, the have you will heard move. ladies young girl young ladies run for office it's not just run male dominated yeah. hajar amati says we should run for office we need women and uh, rep women representation as well and mm -hmm. we can do it we can do it absolutely we can do it you know yes, yes. so, yeah, so um yeah, one of the things I wanted to ask you uh, as we wrap up, uh, Jeramatu, is um, uh, what do you, what do you, um, I apologize, I apologize. I have a toddler who keeps bombing in. Um, I, <laughs> yes. So what I wanted to ask you, Hajaramatu, based on uh, what we have discussed, what are the way what's the way forward as we gear towards the 2020 elections you know nothing can go on well without money yes money, uh, i mean so so when you look at most of the political parks or campaigns all the um the candidates are sending emails and referring you to their websites to contribute because it's money everything that they're doing it involves money, spending money to make flyers, to get transportation, to do a lot of things. So the African community has to position itself. And that's why we have this pack. You have to contribute and support. So when we are going to meet with the uh, with any candidate, we are going with our financial support. And that gives you the, back, gives you the backing. Because in any political process, you cannot just go in and support verbally without any finance, financial support to back up. So I will urge the African community to really put their energy into um, supporting financially. And I think they your can call is for the African community to unite. Yeah, to get, unite, to unite. Is the mobilization. Yeah. You know, we are in the process of mobilizing, having the ADG. Yeah. But the next thing is, besides the ADG mobilizing, we have uh, branches in almost all the states as I'm speaking. And we have all what, the, what did you say? Yeah, we have um, ADGG is, has branches in almost majority of the states. Okay, in fantastic. Yeah. Yes, that's we amazing. Have, I can talk about the East Coast, California and Florida and other parts are well structured and we are doing very, very well. Uh, the board of directors are doing very well. The executives and the state coordinators are doing well. And you know the energy in this program, people are putting their 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 resources. Nobody is paying Moment. anybody because it's a, it is just a new okay. organization. But I tell Wonderful. you that the resources that people are putting in, their manpower that they are putting in to make sure that this uh, organization gets a footing in America yes. for all of yes. them is very amazing. Uh, and I, I I will encourage people to go. Um, to call um, uh, the president, Ungo Chuku. I have his number. Please call him and um, let him know that you are with him. And also call um, Chuks Eleanor. Chuks Eleanor is the, um, the executive director of the political arm of the organization. And his yes. number is 202-714- Five nine two one. Again, Chuks Eleanor two o two 
714-594-5921. Please call him and um, he will give you more details about their organization. And he can give you, you know, he can also link you up with the president, Ungochuku, Uwakuro, and also Chijiki in the call. He is the vice president of the organization. These three people are very important and really they have done very well to bring us together uh, to participate uh, in this uh, political process. And again, grassroots mobilization is not an easy task. It's about no, bringing the people yeah. to participate in the political process, not only taking them to vote, but they have to participate in the campaign. They have to participate mm -hmm. in fundraising. They have to knock at doors and tell people to exercise their rights to vote. And on the day of the voting, they have to get people out to go and vote. So it is a whole job. It's a whole combination of work. It's not just getting people to go and vote, but getting them to be part of the campaign, getting them to be part of the education, getting them to tell their door neighbors, you know, that, hey, you have to go out and vote. And also, you know, telling their candidates that, look, this is what we want you to do for us, or this is what you are doing wrong and we are not happy about it. And mm -hmm. even after the election, they still have a say. They can tell the candidate, the, the winning candidate, that this is what you have done and this is what we want you to change. Because if it Wonderful. is for... Thank you so much for enlightening us, Hajar Ramatu. It's very critical because sometimes I believe what's uh, happening is people have don't have enough information and they don't know where to find the information. However, at the same time, there's a technicality where uh, society will say ignorance is no defense. But thank you so much for sharing that because it goes on to show that, you know what, how can you do certain things when you don't know information? And sometimes I believe people shun away from voting due to they don't know where to start from. And uh, um, I really commend you and applaud you for sharing. Uh, please continue your thoughts. Yeah, one thing I want to talk about is uh, our participation in the political process, process. You know, in Africa, our campaign strategies sometimes differ from here. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, mm -hmm. if candidates and parties can inculcate our cultural campaign strategies, it will also encourage our people to come out and vote. You know, in Africa, when somebody uh, is running for office, what do the women do? We wear the t-shirts, but we also do put on our wrapper, our African attire, uh, you know, with the uh, with the candidate's picture on the on the uh, fabric. So you sew mm -hmm. your African uh, dress, but you have the candidate pictures everywhere around your your um, uh, in the uh, on the dress that you wear. So I think those are the things that we can inculcate, and we sing songs, we beat, beat our drums. So when we have uh, a segment that is really culture. Uh, to fit the African community. So when the Africans are coming to support a candidate, we are coming with our drums, we are coming with our dancing, we are coming with the uh, t-shirts, the but again, the women will wear our African attire and then the candidate's yeah. head will be on it. You know, so you replicate what you used to do in Africa in your political process here. I think when we do that, it will encourage our people to participate more in the political process. To build and the morale, to boost the morale. That, um, yeah, because it is a strategy. You know, every political process is a strategy. You want to develop a strategy to get more people to come out and vote. You want to develop yeah. a strategy to get people to support you. So this is one of the things that I think we should do. And the Africans ourselves, let's also develop something alongside our culture, something that will encourage our people. We can have a, a story uh, like a, the fireside campaign for a candidate. Absolutely. We are used to storytelling in the night. So bring some, some kind of a flavor from the background of the African culture and let the people be part of it. You know, so those will encourage people to participate. The fact that we are encouraging them to participate, we can also develop programs that will entice them to get fully engaged in the political process. 
Wonderful. And how is the, how is um how have you been seeing the have more pol uh, pol has have the political parties been reaching out to the African community? Have you been seeing more of that at the moment, or no? Yes. Or you'd love yeah. to see more I know of Africans, it? I know Africans who are supporting um, uh, Joe Biden, and I also know okay. Africans who are su supporting our current president Trump, Donald Trump. So, and I love yes. that because yes. uh, we don't expect absolutely. Everybody. Yeah. So that is what Africans. Uh, they have to uh, campaign. The the uh, the the different political parties have to reach yeah. out to yeah. the different communities, and then likewise give them a chance to choose who, uh, give the voters a chance to choose who they want to uh, choose based on their ideologies. And yes. So we give them that opportunity, and I know them. Yeah. You know, come to all of them. Mm -hmm. That's uh, great. So that's that. That is the that is a good thing about America. You know, you have your yes. freedom to choose whatever you want. <laughs> and some people are still swinging. You want. They are swinging from A to B every day. They don't know where they the, belong. The independent voters. Yeah. The, yeah. So, so they are also there. But um, for for us as Africans, again, my the youth, I call them my children and my grandchildren. Get out mm -hmm. and vote and encourage yourself. Develop your own small groups just for this political process. Create your small Absolutely. groups, the women, do something, you know, create something. You can even develop your own songs. You know, back home, what did they do? They will create a song right away and they'll be beating the drums and say, hey, we support this man, let me sing now. We support you for this, we support you for that. We support you, blah, 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 blah. You know, just like that, that we do in Africa, let's do it here. The what hype, do, creating the hype and the enthusiasm. And people, and you know, we women, when we we, we sing the song and we, then we just stand at one point and say, hey, you dance, 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 and you move on on the street. You are campaigning for a candidate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh you my know, man, goodness, this has been so amazing. Awareness. Yeah, we create awareness. We don't have the resources, but when we want to create awareness in our community to get people to support a candidate, it is easy to do so with the African community. Our drums will do the job for us. And the women are very good. They will sing a song. The drums speak. Sing. The drums speak. And it speaks a lot. And you know, we have the, the, the talking drums. So we'll talk with the drums, will talk for us <laughs> on that day. <laughs> yeah. All right. You have you heard the amazing and phenomenal Hadja Ramatu of Hadja Ramatu Ahmed of the Africa Life Center giving her her insights on the 2020 elections as well as what you can do to get your vote heard as well as joining uh, I, I mean registering to vote and besides registering to vote running for office Hajar Ramatu it was a pleasure having you on Africa today on our African diaspora grassroots voting thank you so much for your gracing us with your presence it's lovely having you and once again folks Please don't forget to join us next week on AfriqueToday.com at 6 p.m. And you can watch us live on uh, four, uh, four, uh, four platforms, that is Facebook, um, Twitter, AfriqueToday.com, and Instagram. Lovely seeing you and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.